Hey everyone, today I want to show everybody how we can build a RESTful API to communicate with the MySQL database using Express and SQLize. So I'm just going to create this folder here. And first thing I need to do is just open up git bash here so I can create a server.js file. All right, so now let's go ahead and start up this node project with npm init dash y. So now I can install some stuff. We'll need express, sqlize, the sqlize CLI, and MySQL2. So my. Okay, so hit enter here. Maybe give it a little bit of time and it should set up here. All right, so now let's just open up our project with VS Code. So I press code, space, then period. Oh, so that's an old project. Let me just close this down. It's not for us here. Let's open up our integrated terminal. And you do that by pressing control and then the backspace. So, oh, you know what I need in front of here? I can't just run SQLize in it unless you have it installed globally. I need to use npx sqlize and then init all right so you can see it kind of built some folders for us and it even wrote some code and models we don't need migrations and we don't need cedars either so let's just delete that inside config.json you see it made some stuff let's open up workbench get into our local instance And we just need two lines of MySQL code here. So drop database, if exists, and the name of your DB. I'm going to call this best to do ever, underscores. All right. Um, and on a new line, uh, create database, best to do ever. Uh, this is what it's going to do is it's going to look to see if this database exists. If it does, then it's not going to create a new database. If it doesn't, though, it'll create our database. So useful for us. And that's what SQLize is doing for us. It's making sure it's keeping us away from SQL code, making it really easy with JavaScript. So let's get out of here. Uh, we need the database to be what we just named it there and enter in the password for your, your dev environment in MySQL for your dev. <clears throat> and let's go, oh, let's close this down, get into our server.js because we need to set some things up. So first, let's bring in express, const express equals require express. Oh, oh, no, go back, go back. Express inside these parentheses here. All right, const app equals uh, require, no, uh, sorry, express, and then parentheses here. So we need a reference to our database. So const db requires, and then the path inside models, get to that in a little bit, because now we need our port. So const port is process.enb.port. That's later on if we decide to put this on Heroku, or 3000. So now there's just some setup stuff we need to do. We'll be using JSON, so let's use app.use express.json. And we need to set up the URL encoding. So app.use express dot URL encoded extended is going to be true. All right, now we can set up uh, the server part of it. So we start off with SQLize. We need to sync the, ser the sync with our database as we're serving the content. So let's say db.sqlize.sync.then uh, inside the then brackets, um, let's go ahead and start up an arrow function. And now it's we can do the app.listen. Make sure to pass the port in on our first argument. And the second one is a function that'll run, that'll console log something. So console log, make sure to use backticks because we're going to use string literals here. So on HTTP, make sure to local host and then port. So this is what the backticks are doing for me, just letting me insert a variable. All right, one quick look through, everything looks good. Oh, 
let's go to package.json. I have a tool on my computer called uh, Nodemon or Nodemon, Nodemon, whatever you want to call it. I uh, highly suggest running it. Uh, if you have it, go ahead and use Nodemon. Otherwise, uh, just run npm install dash g nodemon and you'll be good to go. So let me use the script I just created here, npm run dev. All right, uh, oop, depreciation warning. So let's go back to config.json and change this false to a zero value. There we go. All right, everything looks good here. Uh, now we need to set up our models. Um, so we need to create a table for our database, which is going to be our to-dos table. So inside uh, this model, let's create to-do.js. And we start it off a little interesting way here. Start off with module.exports. Uh, this is going to be an arrow function. Uh, so SQLize, and then the next part is going to be data types. So once we open this up, uh, now we can say const to-do. Let's imagine we're putting a to-do in a table called to-dos, and it's going to pluralize it for us later. I'll show you. So sequelize dot define. Oh, let's define. All right. We need to put uh, the name of the t of the table in here. It's going to be to-do. All right. And now when we open up this object, give it a ta a text value with a type that's going to be of data types dot string. All right. Um, let's make sure that nobody can just pass like an empty value. So let's go allow null equals false. All right, and now let's return to do. So return to do. Let's save it and run our npm run dev. Okay, and there we go. We can see that we now have a table called to dos, even though we kind of we only used to do. It kind of pluralized it for us. So I'm going to open up Workbench to prove it to you. Let's uh, get into that database we created earlier. All right, let's refresh, open this up. Great, so here's the table and boom, to-dos, plural. So just imagine it like you're putting a to-do in a table called to-dos. All right, so let's get rid of some of this clutter. We don't really need it right now. Uh, we got to create some routes. We created our connection with our database. Now we need to create a way we can actually get some functionality out of it. So I'm going to create a routes folder inside routes, API routes dot JS. All right. So to set up a router, first, let's bring in express. Require express. All right. And now we need to create a constant called router. That's going to equal express dot router with a capital R and close that off with parentheses. Uh, let's make some communication with our DB. So Put in the path to models in here. So dot dot models. There we go. All right. So now let's uh, set up some endpoints here. Let's go router dot get. This first endpoint is going to get all of our stuff. So forward slash all uh, request and response arrow function. And now let's uh, access db dot to do, which is the the table that we're looking into. Find all. And it can just be empty parentheses right now. Dot then, and we'll return back a to do. So let's just send that off to. So res dot send to do. Later on, we'll test it using a tool called Postman. Uh, and since it's returning multiple, eventually let's make it plural. So to dos send to dos. <clears throat> All right. Now just to test it, let's go module dot exports equals router. So let's save it. No warnings. This is good. Uh, makes sense because we haven't brought it into our server yet. So let's do that. All right. So now let's just bring in our router. So I'm going to say const API route equals require and then the path to that API route to the API routes we just created. So let's go to routes forward slash routes API routes. And now we need to use it. So let's say app dot use. Put the first, but let's say API, so it'll be API slash all, for instance. And now let's put in API routes. So when we save this, we're not getting any errors. This is a good sign. Uh, I got a nice tool we can use to test the backend here. It's called Postman. 
because I need to hit this endpoint for uh, a local host forward slash API forward slash all, but I don't want to have to write the whole front end to do that. So if I just pass that URL in here, I'll be good to go. So let's, uh, all right, it's already at the right URL here. So we get an empty and array, which makes sense because we didn't make the routes to add, to edit, or to delete. In the next video, we'll do that.